Boyle's law, which is a special case on the mechanical energy equation, which is right here. The typical Bernoulli's law is with no pump, so we have no pump, no turbine work going out, and no friction. So you are left with this right here, which is this one right here, these equations. And since it is very common to use it per unit of length, we need to divide this by gravity. This is Joule per kilogram or exactly the same units meters to the second power divided by the second to the second power. And yeah, we divide this by gravity, this goes away, you are left with height. And well, that's the Bernoulli's law. Now let's do an example or exercise using the Bernoulli's law. So we got density of the fluid is 998 kilograms per cubic meter. We got the diameter in the inlet, which is 50 millimeters. Uh, we got the velocity going in. Okay, we got the pressure going in. Uh, they tell you it's the same elevation, so even though it seems it's going up, actually probably if you this is the same height. So C1 and C0 will be the same. The outside diameter, which is this one right here, is 20 millimeters. So they tell you you can ignore all friction losses. It's right here. I put it in the middle so you know that this is dependent on the trajectory. So before actually asking something, I want you to let you know that we got this pressure we got this diameter, we got this velocity, we got this even though we don't have the height, we don't need it because they will cancel each other we don't know the velocity going out we don't know it, the diameter and the pressure going out, we don't know it as well so the obvious question will be what is the velocity at the exit and what is the pressure at the exit the beautiful thing on the mechanical energy equation or Bernoulli's law is that you don't care about the shape, so you could have either maybe this and then very strongly converge into small one, or you could have a very smooth diameter like this, or you could actually go like a pipe like this and you finish small every time smaller and smaller. Whatever you're using, if you're doing the balance from inlet, which is here and they have the same diameters and you can ignore friction then you can apply this exact example to any shape so perfect let's do the problem let's apply the mechanical energy equation we're not going to use Bernoulli's law because I hate when students learn by heart these they don't even know where does the does come from and sometimes we are going to use pumps and they still want to use this and also sometimes we are going to use the friction and they will literally cross friction away and so on so please guys don't learn by heart the Bernoulli equation I will definitely recommend you to use the mechanical energy equation and do it by yourself all the assumptions so for example same height will go like this because if CA is 5 meters, for example, CB will be 5 meters as well. So gravity times 5, gravity times 5, left and right, they will cancel. We have no pump, we have no work, and they tell us that we can ignore the friction loss. So what I'm going to do is essentially, what I told you here, no pump, same height, no friction, and no turbine. You are left with this on the left this to the right. This is equation number two and let me just show I'm just going to send this to the right and let's make this equation number three. What do we have here? Actually we have every, not everything but we have plenty. We have this, density, we have velocities no but we can actually calculate the second one. Let's do it. Recall that the since this is continuous flow, what enters goes out. 
here. QA, the volumetric flow going in equals the volumetric flow going out. So we can say, by definition, velocity times the transversal area will give you the volumetric flow, A, A, and in B as well. And recall that the area of a cylinder, well, actually a circle is P divided by 4 times diameter to the square. So we have it here. It's exactly this equation we are substituting by P divided by 4 and its respective diameter. So be sure to use the di diameter of each. A, of course, you need the diameter of A, and B, of course, you need the diameter of B. Then solve for the velocity that we don't have, which is this one right here, velocity of B. And we got this. Equation number four, we got velocities, we got diameters, so it's only a matter of substituting 50 millimeters, 20 millimeters. Actually, you could change it to meters, but you don't need to because they are in the same unit, so 50 and 20 times 10 to the minus 3, well, they will cancel, cancel each other and you will get exactly the same number. Don't forget. So one very important aspect in this course is to learn how to size pipes, how to use and apply fittings and why do we need valves. So you can do this entering right here, going to the block number 2 which is piping, fittings and valves. You will be able to see common pipes, material, relative roughness, fittings, flow rate measurement and essentially some valves that are available in the engineering life. Good that you need to power this to the second power and the velocity let me show you it's one meter per second so the velocity in the inlet which is our letter A will be one so doing this process we got the velocity 6.25 meters per second and let's do an analysis guys hopefully by now you know that big areas small velocity small areas very fast velocity so it makes kind of sense that we have a higher velocity. Imagine we did this backwards, we will have a very small number, actually one divided by this, which is less than, I don't know, maybe 0.3, something like that, and will not make sense. So please make the analysis always when you get the velocity. Be sure to analyze it. Is it okay? Is it what you were expecting or maybe you didn't expect that and it's wrong or you made a calculation wrong and so on good but we have velocity let's go back which is here 6.3 meters per second and we want the outlet pressure how do we get this we will use equation number three we have everything but pressure now we have both velocities we've got the density and the initial pressure let's calculate it just do it, okay. Actually, you don't need to do that. We already have this as a number, but you could use this. So, the initial, I'm sending out density, density and density crossover. Density must multiply the velocity head. And recall that VA is 1, so 1 to the square. And recall that all these, or velocity in B, is 6. 0.25 to the second power, negative, and divided by 2, and then you multiply it by density, and you will get units of pressure, and, well, this is about something like 18,000 pascals, negative, when you add it to 100, you will get the final pressure, so there's a pressure drop, why is there a pressure drop if we have no friction loss? Well, first things first, uh, where, where are we? The pressure drop is essentially this right here. Why do we have a pressure drop? Because we have a velocity increase in the outlet. If we will have a velocity decrease, we will have a increase in pressure. But in this case, we don't have it. We have a increase in velocity that will decrease pressure. And hopefully it makes sense to you guys that, as I told you before in classes, we are here. Let's say we are, this is B, this is A. You have P, and you have P, and you have velocity and velocity. 
So, if you want to have a very high velocity, which we do have, which is 6.25 meters per second, for a liquid flow is relatively very high, we will have to decrease our pressure. Okay? So, hopefully, it makes sense to you guys. And we're done, guys. If you need more problems of this type, go and check out the course here, chemicalengineeringguide.com. And go to the Apply Fluid Dynamics course. Be sure to go to part number one, which is incompressible flow, and check out. There are plenty of problems that you will find very useful. And not only that, guys, you will have solve problems, you will have quizzes, slideshows, and much more stuff. This was a free preview. You want to get full access, go to my incompressible flow course. The link is in the description of the video. You will get all access. Not only that, you get a very straightforward uh, user-friendly interface so for instance you were analyzing or studying pumps you have it here the pump block and then you have the sections if you were for example studying the types of pumps you can go here and you have all the classes right here not to mention that you also have introduction and conclusion of every one of these so for instance if you were studying positive displacement pumps the video is right here you were studying positive displacement pumps in rotatory and reciprocal are also included here. Centrifugal pumps, which is a very important topic in this course, you have it right here.